Tell me about ayahuasca. Ayahuasca is a plant. It accelerates the speed of your enlightenment. The plant spirit works through you. And it awakens you to a waking reality that's more awake than what you're awake to now. In other words, you get way more spiritual, while most importantly, you get incredibly high. Plant medicine, like ayahuasca, is the most trendy thing in this spiritual underground community. You got to be pretty special to be in the know on this one. Your ayahuasca journey starts by making the brew. Then you need to drink the brew. You ready for yours? You can trust me. You don't trust me? You have so much fear. Is this drug legal? It's not a drug. You can refer to ayahuasca as plant medicine, medicine, a sacred plant, a sacrament, but it is not a drug. Next question. What makes the plant sacred? Its ability to get you high. Like ayahuasca, the higher it gets you, the stronger of a plant spirit it has. This is unlike other plants that aren't sacred, like broccoli, for example. Broccoli doesn't get you high. Are you feeling anything yet? I didn't drink any. Watch how I feel it. Then your high begins to set in. You feel this euphoria of escaping yourself. Can you see how the moon and me are the same thing? Can you see that? Did you see how deep I just went? Could you, could you tell? <laughs> I went deep. <laughs> Ayahuasca comes from a vine, and gathering the ayahuasca vine and brewing it over the course of several weeks is a very intimate process. It's you form a relationship with the spirit of this plant medicine. Where do you get yours? I buy it off the internet. You can't be just anyone off the streets and start giving ayahuasca to your friends. You need to be a shaman. Luckily, I'm a shaman. Becoming a shaman is a very holy process of qualification. It's not easy. How did you become a shaman? I spent a long weekend tripping on the living room floor with a guy who calls himself a shaman in his nice house in Southern California. I mean, this guy was a good shaman. He taught me where to get plant medicine. He taught me how much to use. He taught me how many different sacraments to use all at once. He taught me there's no such thing as too much. He taught me how to clean up my own vomit while believing that I'm a lizard who thinks he's a human, yet is not. He also taught me how to get my friends involved so that I don't feel lonely while I'm going on medicinal benders. I can't remember his name, but he was such an advanced shaman. He basically taught me how to throw a really good party. He also taught me how to call a party a ceremony. And then you get into the heart of the journey. This is where magic happens. And what's happening on the inside can look a little bit different than what's happening on the outside. <laughs> <laughs> Are real shamans from the rainforest in South America? The main problem with those shaman is they're far away. I mean, sure, they'll have 50 generations of wisdom working through them as they orchestrate a journey for you where there's a powerful rebirth. But it'll be expensive to get there. It'll take days of travel to get there. You'll have to put up with the dirty jungle, mosquitoes, and no internet. Or you can have the convenience of passing out on Doug's living room floor for the weekend. That's his name, Doug. Doug the molester, as they call him. 
He taught me everything I know about shamanism. And then as you're eventually coming out of the heart of the journey, as soon as you regain motor function, you're gonna wanna do a spiritual drawing so that you can rationalize that this whole experience has had genuine benefit for you. This is my mandala, which shows you what's just happened here tonight. You, you can see how I'm part of the one and the one is part of me. There's been a lot of healing here tonight. The best part about ayahuasca is it's non-addictive. There is nothing in it to get addicted to. I've been using ayahuasca at least once a week for the past 10 years, sometimes twice a week. And if I'm under a lot of stress, three times a week. And sometimes I'm on it for the whole week and I've never gotten addicted. Isn't relying on ayahuasca for spiritual growth like relying on steroids to get stronger? What? Steroids don't make you spiritually stronger. They do help you hit more home runs. They help you bench press more. I think Gandhi was on steroids. That's how he maintained the size of his physique during his anorexic periods. Does that answer your question? using ayahuasca is right for you? There's two ways to know. Number one, if you know trendy people who are using it and you have a fear that you'll miss out on something if you don't use it, then you're definitely ready for it. Second way, if you don't feel right about using it, but other people put peer pressure on to use it saying things like, oh, you're not ready for it, or you're just afraid to look at yourself, then you're definitely ready for it. Because you're using reverse psychology on you and you need to use reverse, reverse psychology on them, which is psychology. You gotta do what they're trying to get you to do by trying to get you to not do what they want you to do. And then you, of course, wanna keep your euphoria going. So before you're completely sobered up, you want to be planning your next ceremony. When is it going to happen? Where is it going to happen? Hey, bro, you want to get your vine on tomorrow with me? Right, see you at my place. It's the most sophisticated form of spirituality known to man. Can you still hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Can you tell everyone to please subscribe to my YouTube channel so they don't miss a single dose of video medicine.